Okay, good morning and welcome back. So what I want to do today is is to introduce for uh, some of our younger audience members the idea of gesture and drawing through gesture and maybe we'll tighten these up just a little bit to show you a little bit more of the volumes uh, in a series of cartoons. So how gesture is synonymous with drawing the human figure, drawing uh, buildings, drawing still life objects, but also, and especially for cartoons, uh, animators use the idea of action and kinetic movement and gesture with the figure, and also certainly with the cartoon figure. They're really one and the same, and I wanted to demonstrate that today in this particular lesson. So if you like drawing, like many of my earlier students do, uh, anime, or cartoon, or cartoon characters, action, and, and gesture, and all the, the basic process of, of drawing the figure really come into play. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and, and get cracking. So I'll start with Popeye here, uh, one of my old favorite cartoons. This is pretty old for some of you newer folks, but it, it, it il will illustrate the idea quite well. So I'll start with uh, a little bit of, of uh, just the, the main thrust of the character coming down and he's really his back is really arched uh, quite nicely into kind of a, a fighting position if you will and so I'll just start to kind of map out a little bit of th that movement then we'll start to look at the uh, the head here a little bit kind of a classic circle and then with a sort of oval kind of a heart shape inverted a little bit so we'll just get the feel of that form coming through so we can see what's beginning to happen here and we'll tighten that up in a little bit so we bring down the neck the gesture of the neck and the shoulders and I'll continue on with the chest and torso really arches uh, in through here and then we will kind of cut it off where the curve of the, the back ends a little bit where the the pelvic section starts to take to take over. It's kind of a classic circle or oval. So again, with respect to the human figure, the gesture of a cartoon is roughly the same, but then the proportions are all all changed. They're all messed up, right? They're they're very much altered into very uh, unrecognizable, if you will, uh, our new strange uh, gestural configurations for cartoon cartoon model. Alright, and so you have to be respon uh, responsive to that. So we have the, the uh, right leg and the foot coming back over here. So I don't think of it any different. I'm just responsive to the changes in proportion and the scale of one set of proportions to the my ideal set, if you will, for a figure. What I'm used to and what I'm not uh, seeing here is, is is something that's different. And then also to each individual form when I draw the figure um, currently with this cartoon. So there we have really the action of our pipe by figure right in through there. The same kind of feeling that we had. Uh, in terms of working with the the human model, but now we've changed it. So let me we'll go back and I'll start to tighten this up just a little bit and show you how again it's really the same thing. So I'll start to think a little bit more three D. So we'll break this down uh, a little bit further into his shirt here. I'll just kind of start with his his abdomen and his torso, his chest a little bit through here. We'll we'll bring up the neck to the head and if I feel like I need to be more dynamic I'll be more dynamic but again this is the way it's done in the industry uh, traditional drawing is the is the key the, 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 the big, big key to to all that so we'll work on his top little lapel scarf here and we'll bring down his sailor suit his chest his rib cage into his pelvic region in through here so I'm not necessarily drawing the style of the cartoon yet. That can come later on. I could lay this over, put this in Illustrator, and tighten all this up. What I'm drawing is the structure, the design, and the action of the figure of Popeye. And then I can go back and, and, and tighten him up from the rough that we're doing here. But our, for our purposes, 
for this lesson is to see this underlying gesture, see this underlying uh, movement, kineticism, and structure, and make it work and fit together in something that's uh, pretty easy to put together and, and can be, uh, quite frankly, put together very, very quickly. All right, so I'm drawing the leg in through here. I've got the action, so I'm thinking about the three-dimensionality of this tube, just a simple tube or cylinder. So th this really gets us into volume, and I'll, I'm going to go through this fairly fast because that's, that's an, a whole set of lectures for the future. But I wanted you to see how gesture governs these characters, these archetypal icons of the cartoon, the entertainment industry, and how they can be uh, as well broken down into uh, gestural active active forms in uh, your drawing practice. So those of you that are kids, it's never too never too early to learn to draw really well and to draw in a way that is um, conducive for uh, a, a, what I'll call a kind of professional drawing. Really, we get this from the are the great masters, the Renaissance artists, Tiepolo and Pantormo, and uh, many, many others, Bronzini. We'll just bring this foot over. So I'm not being that tight, that that completely accurate to style. I'm just getting the flow in the gesture, and I can tighten up later on. So let's work with his arm in through here. So what's interesting about this top area is that it's pretty thin. He's got some pretty thin little arms coming out to look at the, how the elbow pops out in a real big kind of pee, ping pong ball shape. So they're pretty thin to here, up and through here, and then a shirt, uh, collar, the arm collar here really starts to get that nice kind of donut cylinder shape in through there. And it stays thin, and then all of a sudden, boom, it changes to this really dramatic uh, forearm, uh, the Popeye, classic Popeyeism, and that's like a big uh, fruit or egg, egg form, football form, right in through here. So we get that. And then that ends, it starts to pinch in right in through here, this little joint right in through here. And then it pinches outward to get to his really nice uh, f kind of fist in through here. And then we see the little bumps of the, the thumb and then the four fingers in through here, etc. And so on through there. So that's not necessarily the point for today, but it's to start to feel that those forms and action. So look how quickly and easily it took me to get the the forms laid in through through action and, and gesture. And then you can go back and and tighten up when when you need to. And of course this, these could go through so much more tightening, but we'll just get the simple forms laid in. So we have his forearm and then slightly here where his upper arm ends through there we get the donut of the shirt and through here. And then, of course, his elbow up and through here and then down to his fist, fingers pulled over, his fist and his fingers tighten up in through there. And then we get, I'll tighten up his shirt a little bit in through there. So all this, you want to feel all this as a turn. Even though this looks flat in the final cartoon product, all of this you want to feel as three-dimensional, this kind of contouring and turning and turning and turning, because that's really what sets these figures in motion is their their gestural action but then their three-dimensionality later on so if we come up here and just get a little bit more of his head we'll put his head features in through here we've got his hat that comes over prop it out a little bit looks like and through here really quickly and then we'll split the face in two come down and get his bottom jaw kind of clenched up and in this top area can be thought of as another ball in through here and the pipe kind of coming out like so and then his nose sits on top 
of these two forms, like so, it's kind of a bean shape in the eye. Just get that gestured in really quickly. Get it to squint a little bit more. And then these little little uh, squinched eye strokes and then his mouth puckered in and kind of a, a displeasing view. Looked like he's ready for a fight with Brutus. And then we'll bring down the ear a little bit. So there's the first gestural figure of Popeye. So I mean, you can get this uh, laid in pretty quickly, add your volumes, and then you can spend uh, lots of time tightening up uh, your model. So let's move on to uh, another cartoon character here. Let's go down. And we'll go uh, work with the Lion King here. Let me see if I can get this brought up maybe just a little bit. Let's see if I can make it a little bit bigger. There we go. So you can see that maybe a little bit better. All right, we'll just work with the line. Maybe I'll have a little room to put in the uh, the lion prints there. So let's work with this particular uh, aspect of the lion. So the first thing I, I look for and I see is the angle of the head. So he's really pushed in this direction coming downward so his head is tilted over and slightly back to the left and then the next thing I'll start to feel is the shoulders and so you know I don't know that much about lion anatomy I, the more I know the, the better but what we do know is gesture and kineticism and movement and what we're learning through uh, the figure so the next thing I look for is this movement back this way with the body it's slightly coming back so this underneath line here uh, is is terribly important for the the gesture of this particular pose this is kind of like uh, a sausage form or a tube form up and through here with the body of the line so he's moving through here and up and through then we have the undercarriage of the main wit will come back in this direction. So we could throw on the head just generally right in through here just to get a feel for uh, what we're looking at without putting really the main on so far. And we see the Lion King's head about like this for now. With the nose a little bit will come down and of course the mouth will open up later on in through there. So we have that. We'll bring uh, bring the backside in through here the tail will come down and let's start to figure out then the limbs of the legs so the next step is to figure the gesture of the this front leg in through here coming down and through getting the scale the proportion and the length of that leg and then bringing the paw down uh, in through here the first paw which is stabilizing the weight of our model here model being the Lion King in through here and then our next movement is to bring down the back we don't see a whole lot of it so we see a couple of angles in through there and this this tends to uh, move kind of in a circle or a rhythmic flow to kind of catch up in with the back the back leg a little bit in through here so we got the belly coming in through here We'll tighten him up just a little bit so you can see that. And then we'll bring the back leg down. His gesture flow is this way. And then we'll bring his back leg across here. And we see just a little bit peeking out of the foot to the ankle right in through there. And then the back leg, we'll shorten up this body just a little bit. We'll bring this back leg over. So right now I'm looking between the negative space between here uh, the ankle and the leg here, the back leg in through here, so I can start to bring this movement, this flow down, it's a little bit longer in through here. This moves in this direction, then it moves back out, obviously, in this direction. This, this comes down, this comes through from the back of the buttock in through here, and on over. like so then we'll bring the leg down keep it really quick and simple and loose for the gesture bring his paw down this paw could go a little bit this this leg could go a little bit longer look at the distance between so I'll bring this down a little bit and through here 
And see if you don't erase, you just keep drawing over. Don't worry about erasing. This is all about roughing, roughing in the figure in the proportions of our of our model. So the time limit on these are pretty quick, right in through here. We'll bring down the shoulder, the shoulder shape in form, right in through here. To the main a little bit right in through there that this bring will bring this jaw down a little bit further. So let's get the back of the uh, of the figure of our Lion King together. We can feel this. This would naturally come all the way down, so we can feel this as a three-dimensional shape. The elbow of the lion's arm and through here and down to his leg and paw. through here that curves around so I got that a little bit longer from here that feels a little little bit better and then we'll just bring down the curve of the tail so the hip bone is about right in through here the abdomen ends to the pelvis about right in through there this splits the underneath and we'll bring down just the leg tighten that up just a little bit and we can bring down the length and the movement of the tails in this direction coming back on over so we can bring it through here and bring it through so there we go we've got a good basic action uh, gesture recognition of our of our lion uh, with the Lion King and this gives us this the the underlying rhythmic two-dimensional well, with some 3D uh, structure to start placing our volumes in our solid zone that we can go into. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So we have Felix the Cat. This is pretty older even for some of you students out there that might be a little bit older but Felix the Cat's pretty pretty old and yeah, you know, this is even more simple than some of the other ones. So, some of the things I look for to think about is just these simple forms when you draw. We don't want to think of them of as flat, but I think about a circle, right? And that turns into, you know, a sphere, and so it becomes three dimensional. If we put the ball, you know, on a little table here, put a little lighting on it, and we've got a We've got a three-dimensional object. So same thing with the head, some of the arms, the belly, and maybe even down to uh, the feet a little bit. So I see a lot of, I see a lot of that. Then I see a lot of these undulating curves that balance one another out. So moving in one direction, and then and then changing, coming in a nice uh, other direction, and then moving moving on over into a fatter kind of kind of form but all that can be controlled through through action and through movement in the gesture of obviously the pose so let's tackle uh, Felix here and take a look at uh, what he's giving us in terms of his movement so if we begin if I begin to start if I started with his head I might even draw the large circular head but just where he's coming from in action, he's, he's coming from really the top left and going down to the right and then moving moving us slightly back in this way. So in this in this direction where his abdomen would be somewhere about right in through here. And then his head would start no doubt, oh, let's say right here. This kind of large sort of circular shape that he's giving us in through here. Then his uh, his belly region, ribcage, torso, the whole bit and through there, and then we'll bring it on down to the leg, to the knee here, then on over really quickly to the foot. Foot really moves and it kind of curls up as he's supposedly touching the surface of the ground. Notice that I'm not drawing big shapes yet. I'm not drawing flatly. So one of the things I, I learn 
from all my years of teaching and, and watching kids draw is the mistake you'll make, and it's a natural one, is you just start drawing the shapes and you you really haven't been taught yet to see the under the underlying rhythm or the three-dimensional movement. And you get seduced by just the style. I see that with kids who love anime, they get seduced just by the style and not necessarily how they're drawn or how they're made. Well, this, this gives you a little bit of insight into breaking the mystery, uh, the, the, the mystery behind the scenes. As we look at the flow and movement first, get the pose, analyze the pose, and any, any pose you want, especially with cartoons, since it's mostly, if not all, out of your head, and then you start to turn it into 3D, and then style comes later. So what's, so what's so seductive about cartoons is their style, is their expressive uh, qualities that make us want to watch them, to buy the DVDs or buy the downloads and spend some time watching what the figures are all about. So that's why I don't want to go into too much detail. Maybe I did a little too much with, with Popeye there. But I do want to show you how their, their basic formulation is put together, and that's what action and gesture does. So, so whatever is true of the figure is also very true of the, the, uh, the cartoon, the cartoon model as well. So I'll just kind of rough in here the eyes a little bit, and then we'll get into his body just just a little bit more so I can get a little 3D in through here just to show you that coming through with his circular body form and then getting down to the leg and I'm just thinking about simple cylindrical tubes rounded tube 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 forms here kind of come up with the leg in through here and they give you that little indention right through there because they they want to show that this ankle is coming and overlapping on the foot so they they inked it with a little bit more of that little indention there which was which was smart and then we'll get this leg coming out so once I have my gesture I can just think of my joints and also my tubes coming in and very quickly lay these forms out very solidly. And through here, and we'll get his foot. So the key point is to remember that that the cartoon figure is just a really nice abstract simplica simplification of the the human form. So to draw cartoons well, if you if you draw cartoons really well, you're you're more than likely as a matter of fact, you will. You'll be able to draw the human form pretty well because they're one and the same. Cartoons are just uh, simplification. So this whole arm in through here is kind of a ball. Through there. And this hand moves up up here like so. They overlap the belly a little bit so they leave a little white space to ink it to show through. And in the clenched fist and a happy Felix dancing or singing, singing a tune in his head, walking, doing pretty well and through there. Okay, so that's that's Felix the cat. So let's go on and analyze some more here. Let's take a look, see who we have next. So we've got classic Bugs Bunny. So, you know, one of the icons of, you know, cartoons, Warner Brothers cartoons. So I, I know I grew up on Bugs Bunny and I don't know if younger kids are still watching uh, Bugs Bunny but he's an icon and this is a pretty active pose so it's it's a really nice pose to show off lots of kinetic movement and how how these figures relate to uh, the the human figure let me take him down one there we go so we can get started see it a little bit more we'll pull in there we go let me get that set up for you all right, so let's let's take on bugs here and see what we have. So the first thing I see, I'll do a little study here to show you my thinking. So the first thing I see is this flow in movement this way with my arrow where his where his ears are 
and then I'm turning right where his forehead and his eyes are, then I'm turning right back to through his mouth to where the end of his chin is, right in through there. So I see this movement first, all of this together, right? This, I see that. And then the next thing I see, I could go two directions. Um, I could I could be, get seduced by the arm because it's flowing into the mouth like so and the hands coming down so there's a rhythm this way right you see that and then but what I think most it's more important is this rhythm moving from the chin down through the rib cage in the abdomen down through to his lower his tailbone region pelvic region right in through here so this is important this area so we're moving down here and of course then around and you can get the thickness there a little bit to help out and you can keep going I would keep going meaning that from this movement here look how this back leg keeps that movement going so we get this gestural flow up through the foot and the foot gets insanely big we'll put the tail on a little bit in through here but the foot gets insanely big right and it moves in this direction and so it comes a little closer to us in perspective just a little little bit he has big feet normally so we we pick up this rhythm here and then go back and then back down this way right and then lastly uh, with the legs we pull up to the knee and then tuck back in and then back up again with with the foot through here. So that's what I'm seeing. And then lastly, in this view, is I see this little slight movement, and of course the fist is its clenched. So that's the rhythm of the flow that I start to see with this attitude or this expression uh, with Bugs Bunny. So let's go on and we'll do that a little bit more fully now with the figure. I can maybe go a little bit a little bit faster. So Again, so the, don't worry about screwing up. Don't worry about messing up. Just draw right over it. Uh, it's the first thing I see is these ears, the flow of the ears coming this way. And then I start to see the head, you know, coming down here to, to the mouth. So that's what I see first. I start to see the, this, the shape of the head in through here. This flow if you will, with a, a real mouth wide open, kind of a happy uh, sarcastic kind of Bugs Bunny that we all know and love. And then this flow of the mouth in through here, these fat cheeks opening up, this big smile, this expression of energy and action and kind of a sort of a sarcastic happiness. And then the ears, I'll flesh them out just a little bit more. So I'm not outlining. I'm not worrying about the tightness of style or I'm not inking. I'm not worrying about all the thickness of lines and the color. That comes later on. This is a rough uh, or an action and gesture drawing. That's what we're really interested in. So now we'll take from the movement from underneath his chin. Look how his belly and his rib cage are really pushed over from his mouth. So everything from about where his nose or his teeth are, most of his rib cage is on the other side. So he he's boundless. He bounds out this way and then he starts to come back and dig back in here with his buttocks about where his mouth is. So um, you want this region to be about right here. And then we'll start to come up and get his the rhythm of his tail in through here. That's all we could get for there. So let's go ahead and go on with his legs. So I'm feeling this flow downward from his... Uh, rib cage and abdomen down to his leg out through curled up coming back up the flow we've seen this in our figure studies and then down through the foot way on out it's a super big foot but almost as big as just the thickness of the head it's kind of a triangular form and of course later on you could separate all the toes but we just want to get the feel of it through here right and then the other leg tends to follow in the opposite direction from the uh, the lower leg here up 
You see he's in that, that running position, like he's sprinting, running away from us, teasing us, if you will, or Elmer Fudd, or Daffy Duck, or whoever, right? And then he comes down, like so, and then the foot wants to kind of come back and fold out just a little bit, like so. So I'm thinking about that action, thinking about that movement. And let's put on now this arm over here. Let's put the arm on right through here and move him in a nice, fun direction uh, backwards here to the, to the hand. And I'm kind of feeling where it ends. It feels nicely where it ends it through here. So I'll move this flow to where his arm is going to be. And we'll put on his fist, his clenched, clenched hand a little bit. We'll just get that roughed in. And then let's finish up on the other side here uh, with his uh, other hand moving in through here. We'll put on the, the action of the arm, and then we'll just put on a slightly ovoid formulation of his fist in through there. So that gives you an unvarnished look at the basic gesture or the indication of where Bugs Bunny's going to, where he came from, where he's going to, and the flow or and or and the rhythm of of the, the figure. And of course you can put on later on you can spend countless times working with the expression. So, you know, one of the, the points here is to remember that what is true of of a human form is true of the cartoon, you know, figure. They're both meant to be alive and free and uh, lively, and, and you don't want to stiffen up your drawings by starting out by drawing, um, let's say, the eyeball or the outline of the whisker. You want to leave all that tool Tool, you've roughed in, you've got your volume of your, your cartoon figure, and you've given your audience a really nice sense of the capturing of the expression. All right, so let's move on to another cartoon figure. So hopefully, if you're studying along, hopefully you're drawing with me. Don't be shy, draw with me. If you want to send uh, some of these, uh, your drawings to me, uh, I would be happy to look at them and uh, to critique them for you or give you some good feedback. I won't be too hard, I promise. Uh, it's all about the, the gift of giving back, drawing technique, and learning, and hopefully for you younger kids out there uh, that maybe you can't look at, the, obviously, the nude figure yet, but uh, maybe we can do some clothes studies, but you can look at cartoons in the same way. So if you love anime and if you love cartoons, um, this is certainly a way to draw them quicker to a way to draw them with more confidence, right, in more in in more and better expression than than outlining and stiffening up. I see a lot of kids' drawings that unfortunately just are, are very stiff. Okay, so let's take this double pair. Let's take Aladdin and his female partner. I, I forget her name. Um, let's take them in unison together, and I'll show you how I think through gesture with this pose. So first, one of the first things I think about is her lovely hair as it moves in this kind of direction. Whoops, let's get our marks. Can we get our marks back here? There we go, folks. Okay, there we go. It, it moves this way, so I'm, I'm looking at this wrap in through here and up to where her head is. So her head will be somewhere in through here, so I'm figuring out how to compose these two and show you to get them both on the same page. And I'm figuring out where his head's going to be somewhere up through here, roughing it out, right, in through this direction. And so both their bodies will start to fall from top left and then kind of cascade down uh, a little bit to uh, top left to the middle. And then his leg obviously will move, move more top right in through here so we could bring down the rug that rug and so they've got this big curve later on going in this direction when they're on their flying magical carpets I wish I could sometimes I wish I could fly on a magical carpet I, I would fly all over the world how fun that would be as long as you don't fall off right okay so we've got this 
feeling of these gestural forms coming down. So I'm just really getting a rough of these two together and I can go back and tighten up. I'm not going to erase. I'm not going to worry about the corrections that are definitely going to have to happen. Uh, I'm just going to draw through that. I want you to see that through this gestural process, if you draw a light with a light touch, I've only got the opacity on 44. It's very arbitrary meaning that I just kind of set it there for lightness. Because um, I could I can push down a lot darker over here. And look how dark I can get. That's that's the 44% darkness that I that I need. But anything lighter is, is probably in the 15 to 20%. So I'm keeping a very light touch on my figures. All right, so let's start with her head. And I want to get the head structure in a little bit more clearly. I think that's really important in most gesture studies is to get their head locked in a little bit more concretely in less less wispily than than sometimes the other so I'll, I'll get her head in through here I can bring down her neck there um, and I'll bring start to bring down the gesture of her hair a little bit further in through here and it's a really beautiful kind of it's wrapped kind of a ponytail but it's really in these big sort of sweeping you know kind of forms in through here so we've got that and then I'm automatically going to go ahead and get his head too they're really the 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 structure that holds everything together his head's higher and his chin is about where her the bottom of her nose or her mouth will be and so I've got definitely got to leave space between the heads so I've got to watch that his is higher so his moves up in this direction Okay, a little bit more of a triangular kind of shape. Then it's got his hair wrap coming in through here like so. So we've got that. It's got that triangular shape. Then we'll move up and over with his hair. Of course, his features will be in through here. Eye lines a little tilted in through there. The nose will come down. I want to get into too much detail there. There's where his nose will be. One eye will be roughly running through, running through here, um, and then we'll bring down his neck in through here. His shoulder starts to come over. So now I can really, I feel like I really have a basis for laying their gestural forms in a little cleaner now, in a little, little clearer. So I can bring down her neck, then I'll bring down the action of her shoulder line in through here. Then I'm going to go ahead and find uh, the outline of her chest area, this, the fullness in through here, her breast forms, and then down. The movement flows down and through here with her back, and then she really plunges in with her uh, uh, abdomen and her hips. Then through here, go a little bit darker where her pants will be. In through here, her top will be right in through there. And let's get the action of the legs. They're pretty bulbous because of the cloth, the clothing that she's wearing. So she's bended. Her knees are bended. Resting her leg, a foot will, will pull back this way. Her foot will be here. So she's there. This other knee is bent this direction, the right leg, and pulled back a little bit. So now I have a feeling of her armature, her gestural armature. And so let me just gesture in these larger sort of bulbousy forms here and then the leg form here so it gives you an idea where they're going to flow and then her foot will be back in this direction and through here. <clears throat> okay, so then we'll bring up her arms. So I'll we'll uh, find her shoulder area. I'll bring her arm this way and then up where her hand's going to be through here. Same thing with the other hand in through here. And she's kind of got them both sort of in this roughly the same position in through there. And of course, she's going to have some the big eyes. I don't want to get into too much detail with that. And then we'll have um, we've got most of her 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 figure in, and then we'll start it on him. I'll go ahead and start with his just the indication of his hand on her back. He stabilizes her there as he's embracing her hands together. And let's start with his pose. 
Uh, they start, they mark the sternum a little bit in the inking process, which is nice. And then they give you the shoulder indication in through here, slightly downturn. Here's the shoulders in through here. And then we can move through his, the, his essential action to his cloth down to the pubic region, which is right in through there. So we have this movement coming down, like so. And then I go ahead and get, it's a little bit thicker in his pubic region, the buttock region, and down where his legs start to fold. We can see a little bit of his foot. Then we, we see up to his leg, then his knees bent, legs coming back in through here, and then we can just draw these nice pillowy uh, cloth forms for the, the uh, pant garments that they have here. Again, we're looking to be loose and rough and free and gesture these forms in. Storyboard artists do this with uh, a light touch and a very fast touch. They can lay in ideas for compositions in no time. And then we have the leg here. Gets disappeared through here. Then we have the loincloth in through here. And we'll put on the I will go ahead and I think I'll go ahead and put on the vest a little bit right in through here of his chest. I'll mark his chest in through there. I'll put the other vest on him, even in indications, and then the other arm comes down and through. And it disappears because we can then see his hand down in through here. And in the other arm, I'll start with the hand first. I'll just give an oval-like indication of where the hand's going to be, since we're not going to go into any too much volume or detail. And then I'll work my way back through, sometimes, the action, which the arm is tilted, elbow is here, and then we have the shoulder indicated through here, and the arm will move in that direction. So there you go. There's the essential uh, uh, basic gesture lay-in uh, of my figures, and I could take this and make um, it a lot clearer and make the volumes really stand out and make this more three-dimensional. Then you could take that drawing and then you could put it in the Illustrator or you could leave it as it is and, and ink it and make it much more uh, finished in terms of its style. All right, let's go on. So let's take Iconic Mickey here in Fantasia, one of my favorite Disney films of all time. And let's do our last one here. And, and take a look at uh, why why Mickey is so so interesting and so important, and and analyze his his movement and his rhythm as well. So we look at his flow uh, of this drawing. So maybe I'll do a quick diagram. Here's here's something I'll show you when I, I think through the figure that goes on in my mind in nanoseconds. Um, is I'm looking at him. I'm thinking his movement this way. Then I'm thinking ahead here, then I'm thinking up, up, and over like that. Then I'm thinking down, then I'm thinking belly region, which goes around, right, like that. So I'm just thinking it in terms of arrows, belly region. And then I'm thinking, okay, down, down, all this goes down. This is really pushed in, this expands outward through here. And so the, the robe flow, the robe flow through here, and then over, and then the legs and especially this leg and foot want to come out in this direction so see even in my scribble I've got the feeling of the gesture this is like the most rawest gesture you can you can possibly imagine with the mouth being here the eyes in in through there and so we get this sort of really rough uh, you know 15 second kind of thing going on with flow in movement and the flow of arrows. Arrows are important in your mind if you want to think. You could think, okay, this all moves in this direction, this all moves down in this direction, and then lastly he moves out in that direction with the arms and the hands moving up and over in that direction. All right, so let's go on to this last one with a little bit uh, more refinement uh, than than what I just showed you. Okay, so to start out with Mickey, his flow is he's moving really from this left down a little bit, right, in through his head region, which is going to be right in through here. And of course, he's going to be countered by where his head's going to be up, where his, his, uh, his magic arms 
where he's doing his magic, his sorcery in through here and over. So I'm going to go ahead and lay in the head just to, just to get that stabilizing quotient uh, of the head. So I'm looking at this mouth part first, then I'm looking at the head, this sort of cir circle oval part of the head in through here. Got a great smiling expression. And then we see the classic ear. We've got to get those ears in. We see this one here, classic Mickey Mouse ear here. And we see a little bit of it in the back in through here. Just the gesture of that, right? And then let's go ahead and put on a little bit of just that coned sorcerer's hat so we can give ourselves an indication of what's really happening here. And then this goes back. This is just a tube, a cone-like tube that goes back in this direction. There we go. So we get that feeling of Mickey starting to take a little bit of shape through the action and the gesture. Okay, so we have that. Let's begin to start to tackle uh, a little bit of his body. So the next thing we'll look at is the, the hands coming up in through here. And again, they're in this movement right this way with the arrows. Then in through there, they're a little bit higher than the head. So I'll put the first arm, first hand through here. Second hand is getting overlapped a little bit by the first. So I'm not worried about a lot of detail. Again, just getting the the basics. The the trick is to 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 be okay with leaving this for later. Leave it for later. Okay, leave it for later when you want to come back to it. Get the total of your drawing in. Maybe I should have said that earlier, but you want to get the total of your drawing in very cleanly, very crisply, but but gesturally so that you can see everything in context and then you can change as you as you need to when you start to work with volume and three-dimensionality. Because I may even bring these arms in just a little bit. They may be too far over from the head. All right, so the next movement then is to capture this oval tummy part. So this is moving in this direction, right? So we've got this coming through here. Here's the, the belly. And notice, look how far everything is over from the head. Everything is pushed way over to the right. He's really, really pushed way over to give him that arching kind of ex expression. So we've got this where it's contracting in through here. We've got the belly in through here. So yeah, I'll probably pull these these arms and, and hands. If I was going to do this longer, I would pull it down. So and then we have we'll pull on his little tightening belt here, little sash in through here, and then let's bring on his expression downward in through here. <coughs> and so everything now starts to pull a little bit back to the left and down and back to the left and through here with his robe and then we can say that his midsection ends about right in through here so we see a little bit of this front leg coming towards us with our shoe so it comes down this way and then his leg overlaps. So it's moving here and it's coming back out this way, coming back out away from us. And so we have then his leg doing this in his foot, the lower leg to the ankle, to the toe region in this direction. Everything is starting to point downward to, towards us a little bit and then downward. And then we see the other leg is a little bit, the foot's a little bit higher than the other. And so we see his foot overlap and come out this way and on through and there, that cloth will overlap and there we go so we now we get the gesture 
uh, of Mickey uh, laid in. And again, that's what the purpose is for here. So, so to wrap this up today, what we've looked at is the movement, the kineticism, and getting the total package of our cartoon characters in before we start any kind of detail, any kind of three-dimensionality. We've got the spirit and the total movement of the pose in, in relatively no time. This will go faster when, you, when I don't have to talk or I don't have to explain. You can draw these, get, get this out very, very quickly, and you find that your figures can come alive in no time. So don't get bogged down by detail. As a matter of fact, get excited about kineticism. Get excited about the pose. Then you can go back on a figure like, say, Popeye, and you can make him look more 3D, and then you can take your tracing paper and trace over him, or you can throw it in Photoshop, or Illustrator and just clean up the line and then you can really uh, add color, add the style that you like and that's how you get beautiful cartoon poses without having to um, be so labored and not making them stiff and actually in the end it will come out looking uh, a lot better for you. Okay, so that is our gesture lesson today. We looked at cartoon characters and how they relate very well to the figure through action, through scale, proportion, and total effect, getting the total drawing and composition in. Uh, so if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to always email me, look me up, and I'll be happy to take a look at your drawings. All right. Take care, everybody, and I will see you next time out there. Bye-bye.